In our last video, we talked about how we can use bitters to increase our detox capacity. What I didn't mention was that before the video, I was stung on the finger by a wasp. In the past, wasp stings would be painful and swollen for days for me. But this time, the pain was gone in a minute, and the swelling was almost gone within five. I take that to be a sign that my body is becoming more capable of dealing with detoxification as a result of taking bitters. Okay, today let's talk about chemical toxins. For historic man, chemical toxins would be from the air, uh, smoke from a fire, cooking food. Water toxins could be metals that were in a well. Some well water has high level of metals. From food, it would be the bitter constituents that were in the food, and envenomations from insects and snakes and wasp snakes. Modern man has an entirely different set of toxins that we're exposed to. So, from air, we have chemtrails and cigarette smoke and exhaust smoke, and industrial countries like China and India with very poor uh, pollution controls are dumping enormous amounts of toxins into the atmosphere that we eventually breathe. There's only one atmosphere. Uh, meteorologists have been noting for years now that every year the skies are getting darker and darker from the amount of toxins that are in the atmosphere. From food, we have things like artificial colors, artificial, artificial flavors, preservatives, uh, hormones in the milk, antibiotics in the meat, aflatoxins on the grains. We have uh, lubricants that are put in to the machines that process our food. So there's a whole class of toxins that are coming in on the, from the food side. A lot of cities and towns now recycle their sewage water for drinking water. And a lot of pharmaceuticals are showing up in the water supply now that we drink because the people who are taking them, well, they urinate them out into the toilet. That goes into the sewer water. That gets cleaned somewhat, recycled back in, but they're obviously not doing a great job of cleaning it because we're able to catch these uh, metabolites and drugs in the water supply of cities and towns now from people's urine. So what are we to do about this? Because in ancient times, historically, uh, when we were exposed to a toxin, the body would recognize it. Uh, toxins are typically bitter, and then the body would respond by upregulating the detox pathway and getting rid of the toxin. What we have now are what I would call stealth toxins. These are toxins that are not bitter. Aspartamine, uh, as an example, incredibly toxic and sweet, or somewhat sweet, depending on your sense of taste. So we have toxins now that aren't bitter and don't trigger our liver to recognize them as a toxin to get rid of them. And so they build up. What we've done is by exposing ourselves to stealth toxins and removing the bitters from our diet, that has had the effect of giving us more toxins coming in with less recognition of them and less toxic capacity to deal with them. Okay. So what are we going to do about this? We've got hundreds of millions of tons of toxins coming in from industry, and there's at least seven million known toxins now. We're going to need to find some way of helping our body deal with this. Detoxification typically happens in three steps inside the liver. There's phase one, phase two, and phase three. So let's talk about them. Phase one is the cytochrome P450 pathway. And what happens is the toxin has an oxygen uh, molecule attached to it, and that makes the toxin reactive. Very quickly thereafter, phase two comes along and attaches something to the now reactive oxygen site. That could be glucuronic acid, it could be glutathione, it could be a methyl group, it could be an acetyl group. Um, it could be a sulfur group. That's phase two. 
And then in phase three, it's uh, released out of the body. That would be out the kidneys or out the liver and the gallbladder into the bile. So what we need to do is stimulate all three of these pathways, all three of these phases. Now, phase one is triggered by bitters. So every time you're taking something bitter in, you're stimulating phase one pathway. This is why coffee enemas have been used for detox for so long. Coffee is very bitter. So when we take it as an enema, it triggers the liver to turn on the P450 enzymes, phase one detox. A more convenient way of doing it would be uh, with coffee as a suppository, as, our, as we have in our Xenoplex product. Uh, that will, uh, coffee in the suppository has the same effect. We've got the P450 being activated because coffee is a bitter element. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to get the phase two going. So what you would want to do is uh, supply the body with the raw materials for that. So for glucuronidation, that would be glucuronic acid. For glutathione, uh, conjugation, that's glutathione. Uh, methyl groups uh, and sulfur can both be supplied by MSM, which is sulfur with methyl groups attached. And then for acetylcholation, for the acetyl groups, vitamin B5 is a precursor for acetylcholine for CoQ uh, A. Uh, that's what donates the acetyl group to that. So if you can give those raw materials at the same time as you are triggering phase one, then the toxin that is rendered uh, more activated uh, by phase one then uh, is conjugated to these other pieces of the puzzle in phase two, and then out it goes assuming that your kidneys and liver and gallbladder are functioning in phase three. Okay, how would we do all this? Uh, for phase one, I would suggest something bitter. It could be our product Zoibin. It could be anything that uh, has a very bitter taste, but you have to taste it. Uh, if you take the bitters in a pill and swallow them, all of the uh, effects in the body that get triggered on the tongue don't happen. There's plenty of bitter receptors in the intestinal tract and inside the body, but you also want to taste the bitters. Also, something like Xenoplex, which has the coffee and the glucuronic acid, uh, MSM, vitamin B5, uh, and the glutathione. Coffee and Xenoplex may support the body in activating uh, phase one detox, and the glucuronic acid, glutathione, MSM and vitamin B5 may supply the raw materials uh, necessary for the body to move forward with phase two. So then what's left is phase three. Uh, what we can do for that would be to make sure that the kidneys and the liver and gallbladder are moving properly. So uh, you want to make sure that the, there's no bile sludge or gallstones in the gallbladder and that the kidneys have got a good function to them. You might consider something like glitamins and metacardium to support the body in moving phase three along. What I said earlier was that phase one attaches a reactive oxygen site to the toxin so that in phase two, the other compounds can conjugate. But if there's not enough of those compounds there, you've actually made the toxin worse. A toxin is made more toxic, more reactive in phase one, and the body thinks to itself, well, no problem, I'm gonna put it right into phase two, but if it crashes at phase two due to a lack of one of these other compounds, now the toxin is actually more toxic. So when you have people that do a detox and feel terrible right off the bat, they're getting phase one, but probably not phase two. Another possibility is the phase one process generates a lot of free radicals. So if someone has a very low antioxidant capacity, then they might be feeling sick from the detox due to the free radicals being generated. You might consider an antioxidant, something like rejuvalon, which contains superoxide dismutase, catalase, and melatonin. So that's how I would handle chemical detox.